Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a tiger in watercolour. First of all, let's start by seeing how we can sketch out our subject using a few basic shapes. Let's begin as always with the circle for the head. Somewhere about here, the head of course in this case is quite low because the tiger is in a stalking attitude. Then we'll have the line across the middle for the eye line, the centre line for the nose, which stops at a little tip, which is a little triangle there, two triangles for the ears, slightly to one side, and now we'll go to the ovals. The first and most important oval in this case is the chest and shoulder oval. Notice it's quite high in comparison to the head because the tiger is in the stalking position. Next, the center oval, which represents the midsection of the tiger. Again, it's quite high compared to the head. And notice this time, because one is behind the other, we need to bring these ovals together. So they're not spaced out, they're very close together. And the final oval for the rear end, the hind quarters, virtually the same. So we have three ovals just overlapping each other. This time with the addition of cylinders for the legs. One cylinder down here, another one, cylinder stroke oval shape for the paw. This leg, of course, is behind. Another cylinder there, shorter one for the lower half of the leg, another oval for the paw, and of course we can add in toes if we want to. These are just, again, simple little oval shapes to represent four toes on each foot. Now we've put the spine line in and that will give us our basic shape of the tiger. So from the tip of the nose, running up the neck, into the shoulder, into the back area, down the hind quarters, and the final little swish of the tail at the bottom, and there's our basic sketch. Of course, seeing these basic shapes uh, in an animal or in a photograph you're working from is not always easy. Uh, an easier option would be to take a sheet of tracing paper lay it over the reference that you're working from and practice drawing the basic shapes through that. So here's our reference, tracing paper over the top, circle for the head, the eye line, curve of the nose with a little triangle at the bottom, remember, two triangles for the ears and then our three ovals, the chest shoulder oval, the midsection oval, overlaying as before, and the hindquarter oval there. Cylinders for the legs, here, here, oval shape for the foot, cylinders for the legs here, oval shape for the foot. Remember the little toes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then finally the spine line from the tip of the nose up through the head, shoulder, along the back, round the hind quarters, and the final swish of the tail. Of course, you can easily transfer that onto the paper that you're working on, be it a drawing or a watercolor to prepare for your final sketch before painting. OK, so I've transferred my basic shape outline to my watercolour paper and just taken the time to sketch out some of the finer details, for example, the features, eyes, nose and mouth, and of course the stripes, of which there are quite a few. Uh, then before I start painting, what I'm going to do is mask the tiger with some frisk film. I've traced the outline of the tiger onto the frisk film I'm just going to cut out that shape and stick it over to protect him from the watercolour layers. So here we have the tiger all masked out with the frisk film ready to start painting. The first thing I'm going to do is to lay down a tunnel background using a wash of burnt sienna. Now this can be applied in very loose vibrant strokes so we don't need to worry about being neat at all. This will add to the more natural feel of the background. So make sure we have plenty of the wash available to us, not too thick. We'll give that a try. So some nice, vigorous, vibrant strokes across the whole thing. And what we're we'll going to do over this, of course, is to splatter some paint into the background. So we'll wait for this to dry before we continue. But I don't want it to look flat. I think a nice, uneven, Almost a textured background works really well with this. So we just need to leave that to dry for a few minutes while we prepare the paint to splatter the background. So now our tonal background is dry, I'm going to start almost infusing some heat into the painting by splattering three different colours over the top of that. 
uh, I'm going to be using first of all a wash of vermilion and then a wash of cadmium orange and a wash of cadmium yellow. For this I'm going to be using an old stiff brush. You can use a toothbrush or anything that you don't really use for painting anymore. And remember of course when you're doing this to direct it away from you and if you're working in a kitchen or something like that make sure you've got plenty of paper around. So starting off with a vermilion, just load up the brush, get ready with your thumb, stand well back and begin to splatter. The good thing about this, in fact the fun part about this, is you never really know quite what to expect. But what I'm aiming for is getting the red tones around the bottom of the painting and let them fade out a little bit towards the top. Now while that's still wet, I'm just going to clean the brush and go for the next tone which is the cadmium orange. It's nice to get some of these colours kind of fusing together while the blobs are still a little bit wet. But you can really go to town on this. It's, it's not anything that's specific. It's just to get a kind of abstract form to reflect almost the heat of the environment where the Bengal tiger lives. Finally the yellow. Of course the yellow being the lightest colour, you don't see that too much, but it just adds some nice subtle inferences here and there. Almost to finish off, I'm going to put another slightly heavier layer of vermilion splattering in the foreground, maybe follow it up with a, a touch more cadmium orange. You kind of have to judge it as you go along and whatever you're happy with then you can leave it there. And once it's dry you can peel off the frisk film and see what interesting effects we've managed to create. Okay so now all the background paint is dry we can peel off the frisk film to reveal the tiger underneath. And he's all still in one piece, ready to start painting. What I'm going to do first of all is lay down a background colour of cadmium orange. For this I'm going to use a half inch short flat brush and just take a little bit of the cadmium orange here. So it just simply adds a background tone. And I'm going to overlay the fur, just check it for depth. Probably want it a little bit thinner than that. So just water it down. And what I want to do at this stage is avoid painting over the very light areas such as the uh, white markings around the face, the ears and so on. And to avoid getting any streaks in the wrong direction always try to paint in the direction of the fur. Where we have a light section such as the, the roof or the mane around the outside we can use the flat side of the flat brush just to cut that in to create that shape. But everywhere else you can simply have this base coat of cadmium orange all over it. Of course our pencil sketch still gives us the guidelines underneath and any pencil that remains at the end of the painting that you want to get rid of simply take a plastic eraser and rub those lines out. I don't think you should necessarily worry too much about going over the edges here and there. Watercolour generally is associated with a little looseness in the style so we're not too worried about that. Now we'll come down the head, just paint around the tips of the ears leaving those little white spots at the back of the ears and down the centre of the nose and just to the tops of the muzzle. Now with a clean wet brush if you want to soften any of these marks out just take a damp brush, squeeze it a little bit with your fingers and then we can soften the edges here and there. Even when the paint is dry you can still do this. So because we're painting soft fur of course and not, not hard lines like the edges of buildings and so on we need to start thinking about having these edges nice and soft. The important thing is, this is just our background tone. It's going to give substance to uh, the colour we put on for the markings, the eyes and so on. So that completes our first layer. Okay, so now the first coat is dry. What we're going to do is take a dark colour, this time the burnt sienna wash, and we're going to start to a little bit more carefully glaze in the darker areas uh, of the tiger, the shadows and so forth. A little bit of burnt umber, a similar wash or glaze to the orange we just used. Always remembering it's going to dry a little bit lighter than you first imagined. So we'll do a little test area first which is the shadow underneath the chin. Still using the short half inch flat brush and you can cut in with the blade of the brush to get ragged edge of the rough as you work. So quite a flat glaze all down that leg and again if we want to Soften the edges a little bit, just dampen your brush, squeeze off the excess and feather out the edges of the paint, either while it's still wet or you can do this when it's dry. Take a little bit more of the glaze and cast the shadow just underneath the roof. Again using the blade of the brush 
to chisel out the shape of the roof that's in front. So a little bit of shadow along the center of the neck. Of course, there'll always be a slight dip as the fur goes in and lighter as it comes out from that center. Down the center of the head, again, there's a dip in the fur and then feather that color out to get a soft edge. Same around the ears, we'll begin to get the ears slightly darker. Although they're black, we need a dark undertone underneath. I never like painting flat black, especially on a white surface because it can look too flat. But black always should have a semi-dark tone underneath, be it blue or brown, depending on whether you want your black to be warm or cool. Again, feather that into the face or into the head, then continue a little darker section of fur between the eyes and the nose, and then we can work under the eyes again exactly the same way. Feather it out as before, keep it looking nice and soft, and then we can finish off filling the darker shadows in around the side of the head, just here and there, and into the chin. Again, very important to feather these off, keep them looking soft. And then we'll leave that to dry, and then we can start adding texture and detail. Okay, so we're about halfway through now. Join me after the break when we'll complete the painting of the tiger.